Hello and welcome back to Remember the Flowers. We'll be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is when Silver slash Talon uh, made his appearance, finally, and Ring was more than overjoyed to have his boyfriend back. So... This new character is going to play a special role in Cyrus's um, uh, coming days, I guess. Um, that's as far as I can tell you right now, but, uh, but yeah. So you can expect this to be a Silver Cyrus episode, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah. Also, there's the party that we're going to get to see. So anyways, without further ado, Let's begin Chapter 11. Aaron says it should only take a couple of hours to set up everything for the party. He tells me that Rose is going to show up in about an hour to do most of the heavy lifting. I think I'll leave the cleaning to Ring and Talon. Talon's pretty good at it. Probably comes with his line of work. Why don't I show you around to get you familiar with the place? It'll be hard to do so once everyone shows up. Sure, lead the way. Gladly. Follow me. I nod and get off my stool. There's a hint of pride in his voice. After seeing the crowd yesterday, he has the right to be proud of himself. Obviously, you've seen the bar and dance floor. If you look up, you can see a DJ sit up. Sure enough, there's a small balcony about a story above the ground. Man, the ceiling is high. He's kind of discreet when it comes to performing. He likes acting as a security camera, letting us know if there's anything suspicious going on. I see. Does he work in the... basement? We really need to find a different way to describe the base. Indeed he does. He typically only works here Friday and Saturday nights. In the meantime, he does odd jobs to make ends meet. That gets me to look over at Kanto. Despite his foul mood cleaning earlier, he looks quite happy now that he has company to share it with. I take it y'all do mercenary work when not doing other jobs? Man, I am bad at being discreet. Aaron chuckles. He probably thinks so too. Pretty much. Kind of hard to have a stable job with the way we work. What about you and Rose? You both run businesses. Isn't that hard? It can be. But we make it work. Thankfully, both of us make enough to hire capable managers and employees when we're gone for a long time. He flashes his axiom at me. We can manage stuff pretty well with these, should the need arise. I guess it's not that much different than how we handle things back in the day. Just a lot more dangerous and illegal. Speaking of work, I messaged our boss about having you work here. She said that as long as I'm here, it shouldn't be a problem. She wants you to make progress on therapy before starting. That's reasonable. I could barely bench 10 pounds yesterday. Aw. Uh, I can stop by sometime to help if you want. You don't have to. You're already pretty busy enough as it is. Nonsense. I'm a regular at the Energen too. Well, kind of. I try to go when I can. Aaron waves me over to cross the dance floor. We still gotta get things up and running for later. We can talk while we work. Sir, yes sir. Aaron takes me down a flight of stairs. It's a small space with a door on each wall. Dancers have their private sessions here. That's where they make most of their cash. They don't usually work on Sundays, let alone during the day, but a couple should come for the party. He opens one of the doors. It's a decently sized room with a small stage, featuring a pole in the center. There are a few chairs surrounding the stage as well. Do y'all do sex work, too? Aaron blinks. I guess that was blunt. We do, yeah. I, I mean, I don't... usually. Sounds like there's a story there. One I'd rather not tell right now. He starts to sheepishly tug on his collar. That's alright, I won't judge. Didn't think you would, just uh, something I'm shy about. It's alright, Aaron. Wanna move on? Yes, please. Aaron hurries me to head back upstairs. The juxtaposition between his big frame and the soft heart 
will never not be endearing. Um, anyway, the bathrooms are going to be down that hall. I'm glad Talon's here. I doubt I have enough savings to pay Ring to clean that mess. Gross. Definitely one of the only downsides of running a place like this. That, and you know, managing it. It's hard work, but I enjoy it. Definitely a lot less stressful than my usual line of work. Have you thought about doing this full time? Aaron doesn't respond right away. When he does, he isn't nervous, just conflicted. I don't think that there's much reason to think about it. It would be nice, but it wouldn't feel right leaving when there's so much work to be done. Maybe once all of this is over, I'll think about it. That's optimistic, to think that there's an end in sight. No idea, hence why I'd rather not think about what ifs. I gotta stay focused for everyone. Well. Remember not to let me get in your way. You won't, Cyrus. I'll make sure to protect you. He pats my head before he rubs it affectionately. As long as we're careful, we'll be fine, alright? It sounds like he's reassuring himself more than me. Still, I appreciate the gesture. Of course, no way in hell I want to go back there. Likewise. He lets out a big exhale before walking to the other side of the building. Oh shit, did I make things awkward again? How do I brighten things up? Uh, I like your uniform, by the way. It's a good color on you. Aaron's ears perk up before he turns around. His big smile has returned. Why, thank you, Cyrus. It's definitely one of my favorites to wear. He stretches his bow tie playfully. You'd be surprised how many tips it brings me. Yeah. I'm sure that's why you're getting tips. Um, anyway, that's everything available to the public. Have any questions? Not really. It seems pretty straightforward. Good. When we eventually get you started, I'll show you the basement. Aaron perks his ears up and looks behind me. Sounds like Kareen is here, and she brought some people with her. She spots us and quickly runs to us. Why the hell is it so quiet in here? I thought we were here to have a party. Well, we still have to set up for said party. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of, where's the man of honor? You knew he was coming? S yeah. Whose idea do you think it was to begin with? Uh, mine? Anyway, where is he? He's with Reem, cleaning the bathrooms. Seriously? Talk about a shitty first date back. She starts cackling over her crappy pun. I chuckle at my own. So what? Was Ring the only one not in on this? Pretty much. Mainly because Talon wanted to surprise them, but... Kareen starts laughing to herself again, confusing me. Eren continues for her. He's normally really good at keeping secrets, but when it comes to Talon, he can be a bit... uh... open. That makes sense. My first time alone with him, he leaked Talon's real name. Kareen starts laughing even harder. Seriously? And he's worried about me leaking information? Oh, come on. Don't we all make some mistakes? Apparently. Ooh. The stealthy fox pops up out of nowhere. The following scream from Kareen nearly pops my eardrums. Jesus, fuck! Kareen looks like she's on the verge of a panic attack. What was that for? You look like you were having too much fun without me. I wanted to change that. You dick! Come here! As usual, Kareen starts being aggressive with people much smaller than her. She manages to lock the fox under her arm. For Silver's sake, I hope she's holding back. Okay, okay, Rose. I get it. Let me go. Yeah, right. I know you could have gotten out of that if you want to. I know you're enjoying this. As if on cue, the fox nimbly slips out of the hyena's grasp. In an instant, he puts her in an arm lock, getting her to kneel. Kareen's eyes widen as the tables turn. How about now? Are you enjoying this? The fox is showing just the tiniest bit of pleasure on his face as he holds the hyena down. You kidding? I'm having a blast! 
Despite being brought to her knees, Corrine seems to think that they are just roughhousing. Silver's face softens, and then he lets her go. Yep, you're just as weird as always. And you love it. Love is a strong word, but I don't hate it. He helps the hyena get back to her feet. I can't help but stare at Silver. What's wrong? Aaron catches my attention. Oh, uh, nothing. Maybe I was imagining it, but I didn't like how aggressive Silver was just then. I feel kind of uneasy. Silver looks in my direction. Trust me, Cyrus. Don't be afraid to put her in her place if she gets too grabby. Being grabby is how I show affection, though. The hyena laughs, eager to pounce on Silver again, as if she didn't just get her ass handed to her. Rose, seriously, that's enough. Even Aaron is getting exasperated. Let's use that energy to help finish setting up, okay? Fine. But I'll get him one of these days, I promise. Maybe I'll just let you win so you stop trying. There's no fun in that. Kareem blurts out smiling. Silver cracks a small smile too. You're so annoying. It only takes a little more than an hour to get everything ready for the party. At first, people start slowly trickling in. Then, before I know it, most of the dance floor was packed. I mingle around for a little while, but my anxiety started to spike around all these people. I decide to sit at the quiet part of the bar, talking with Aaron here and there when he is free. Sadly, with how many people are wanting an order, I barely get to see him. Jesus, how did I used to handle situations like this? I really am out of my element here. I can't deny that it's fun, but I'm not sure. I think I'm starting to realize just how out of place I am. Ever so often, I turn Kai on to check the time. The pounding music makes it hard for me to use the mental link on my axiom, but thankfully, no one bothers me when I take it out. Aaron manages to sneak away for just a moment to see me. Jeez, I wasn't expecting this many people to show up. I guess that's what you get for hosting an open invite party. It was an open invitation? Is that safe? Well, open for people we work with. Honestly, most of them don't know Talon. They just came for the free drinks. Nothing wrong with that. I stare at the crowd again. You sure you're okay? Yeah, I mean, kind of. This might be a bit much for me. I should have figured. Sorry about that. Want me to take you home? Don't worry, I'll be fine. I think I might head out for a short walk, though. Okay, be careful. Call me if you need anything, alright? I nod before getting on my feet, and then fighting my way through the crowd to get outside. Chapter 11 Kinship The blast of cool air is quite welcoming. It's very nostalgic to me now. Thankfully, the streets are a lot more quiet. I pull my hood up as I start to take a stroll. I make it a point not to stray too far away from the bar. Most of the shops around here look pretty normal to me. At this point, I can only assume that Tunisia is an outliner of a city. I peruse the many windows on my walk. It's been a while since I've gone window shopping. One store specifically catches my eye. In the window are several guns that I assume are assault rifles. Underneath them are a few rows of knives. Though they have similar shapes to what I know, the guns look just a bit more futuristic. What, you want to buy one? I can feel my artificial heart skip a beat as I'm once again taken by surprise. Silver is standing beside me. He has his hood up as well. Seriously, can you, like, warn me when you're going to do that? I literally don't know how much my heart can take. From what I heard, it can take quite a beating. Don't worry, Vita is capable of doing maintenance work should the need arise. That's not... Never mind. Wait, why are you here? It was getting a little too crowded in there for my liking. I don't do well in large crowds. Makes it hard to keep track of everything. Silver's left paw is resting on the knife holstered on his left leg. Plus, I noticed you left. 
don't want our hardest job to have been for nothing. He says with a smile, although it's not entirely convincing. That does get me to start to wonder, though. Were you there when your crew broke me out? Nope, I was busy by the time they wanted to get you out, but I did help set the whole thing up. Oh yeah? How? I made sure that we had the right credentials and materials to pull it off. It took me a long time to find the right people from Resum who wouldn't have been missed, mainly ones with little to no family or social standing. He gestures down to his knife. Ah, you killed them and took their stuff? More or less. I see. I look at the knives in the windows again. Were you looking to get more? Silver doesn't respond right away. When he does, he sounds almost confused. They weren't lying when they said that you were a pretty hardened. Most people usually get scared when I let them in on what I do. Kind of have to be. It's cliche to say, but I'm not really most people. Kind of hate to admit it. Is that right? It's a long story. Plus, not sure how much I should talk about that while we're out here. Aren't you nervous? Not really. Thankfully, I'm pretty good at sensing whether or not someone is spying on me. We're safe up here, trust me. If you say so. If you're worried, how about I get you your own knife? I don't know. I haven't had the best track record with knives lately. It just takes practice. Soon you won't feel a thing. He pauses. Wait, uh, that came out wrong. I chuckle. You're fine, Talon. I wasn't looking to buy anything. Just kind of surprised to see a weapon store out in public like this. Gotta keep in mind that for a lot of people, survival isn't always guaranteed. Stores like this are pretty common, although it is a little out of place here. If you can afford to live up here, you're pretty safe. I look up towards the mountain where Aaron's condo resides. I hope it's safe enough. Silver follows my gaze. You've been up there? Axel took me the first night I got here. It's nice, huh? He lets me crash there sometimes. It is. I was a bit nervous, but I felt pretty safe with him nearby. I can relate. Not sure if you met him yet, but my brother lives up there. Brother? Yep, his name's Ash. He's a few years younger than me, just turned 20 recently. Huh. Does he work with you all? No, and I make sure that he never has to. All of the levity in this bizarre conversation is immediately sucked out. I'm not sure how to react to such a tonal shift. At the very least, I can try to comfort him. You're a good older brother. I don't know what your story is, but at the very least, I can tell that much. Silver smirks at that. Hmm, you trust people too easily, you know that. So I've been told, but hey... Even if you're all lying to me, it's not like I have much to lose. It's my turn to bring the mood down, but it's not wrong. Silver takes a moment before sighing. You know, it's been a while since I've met someone whose past is more fucked up than mine. Are you segueing into telling me about it? Only if you want me to. Maybe not out here. It's kind of chilly. Maybe we can port up to Axel's place so that you can see your brother? Probably not. I think Ash is at work today, retail. My condolences. He likes it well enough. He's more of a hard worker than most people I know. Let me think. As far as I'm aware, I'm free from any obligations for at least a month. We've got plenty of time to chat. Sounds like we'll both need it. From what little I know about you, I'd say so. Silver's ears twitch from under his hood. He turns to look around. Let's head back to the bar. I don't think anyone's nearby, but I bet Axel will be worried if we're out too long. You have an axiom, right? I do, but are you sure you want to add me? We just met. I pull down my sleeve to reveal my own axiom. Silver doesn't seem too phased by it. I don't see why not. Another talent of mine is figuring out who I can or can't trust fairly easily. Silver takes out the axiom on his right wrist. Plus, no offense. I would slice you without any effort. For just a moment, his eyes flash, that hint of aggression I saw earlier. He's warning me to stay in line, now that I'm here. Do what you gotta do. I'm pretty good at being picked apart, as you can imagine. 
Silver's face relaxes once more. I'd rather not, thanks. With a smirk, Silver slides over his contact information. I guess now I don't have to worry about exposing Kanto for letting his real name slip. If it comes up, I'll just say that he let me know on his own. Got it. Shall we head back? Let's. Silver and I end up sitting at the VIP section of the bar for the rest of the party. Every now and then, Kanto comes around to talk shit with Silver. The two of them are cute together. Oh yeah? You cook, right? Every now and then, why? On our drive back, we stayed the night in an abandoned warehouse. Ring was real protective over some dumplings you made, to the point that he was basically hoarding them. That causes Silver's ears to lay a little flatter. I told him that they weren't that big of a deal. To his credit, they were pretty good. He let me have one. You'll have to thank Vita for that. They're the one who taught me the recipe. Is that right? Yep, besides Axel. I'd like to think that I'm the best cook in our immediate crew. There's a hint of pride in his voice. Kind of had to be. It was just me and my brother for a while. I wanted to make sure that he at least had something nice to eat. Another orphan, huh? I see. Looks like y'all are doing well for yourselves now. Every day's a battle. I'm trying, though. I could try to teach you some recipes from before the fall. I'm sure there's some that never made it through the years, although my memory of them is probably not the most reliable. It'd be an interesting way of trying new things, at least. We chat about this and that for a while. Eventually, Aaron comes back. You have a real talent, you know that, Cyrus. I've never seen talent so talkative before, especially with a stranger. Give me a break. I've had a long few months. It's not that weird. If you say so. Aaron says that with an innocent smile on his face. By the way, where are you going to stay while you're home? Ash was looking to see you. I might spend the night with Ring and catch up. After that, I'll come up and visit Ash. You sure do move around, don't you? Kind of have to. I try to be prepared for anything. Fair enough. Cyrus, if you want to come, you could spend the night with me tomorrow. It's probably boring to stay by yourself for so long. Oh, sure, I like that, as long as it doesn't get you in trouble or anything. Nonsense! At this point, you can go wherever you want, with the adequate supervision, that is. Speaking of, are we going to be his bodyguards or something? More or less. The boss wants to make sure that he's safe, while also letting him have his own autonomy. Hope it doesn't inconvenience y'all. Nonsense, Cyrus. It's our pleasure. It'll be a lot easier than stalking someone for months on end, that's for sure. I'll put a note on with the boss, let her know that I'm fine with staying around longer this time. Aaron smiles but raises a brow at the fox. When the fox notices, he lays his ears back again. You know what's personal for me, Axel? That I do. You're a very nice Talon. The fox grumbles, embarrassed. I look towards the both of them, wanting them to elaborate. When Aaron catches on, he responds sheepishly. Don't look at me. That's up to Talon. We've already decided to pick each other's brains later, just not here. Heard loud and clear. I can see Silver's tail flick. He takes the axiom on his left wrist out. I think it's about time I head out. I got some shopping to do later. Oh damn, I didn't realize it was already past 3 o'clock. I said the party would only be until 2. Want me to clear the room? Silver raises his brows, which makes Aaron sigh. Do you know how long it'll take to clean the place up? Some other time, Talon. Good. I'm supposed to be on vacation, after all. After laughing at their morbid joke, Aaron takes out his axiom and starts to type away. I think Rose can handle it. Oh god. I try looking for Kareem in the crowd. Eventually, I see her near the dancers. She turns on her axiom to read the message. Soon afterwards, she runs to one of the side doors. She looks really excited. 
you might want to cover your ears, Cyrus. Both Aaron and Silver try clamping their ears down. Despite being confused, I do the same. The hyena enters the balcony where the DJ is playing. There's a loud feedback sound as she aggressively takes out the mic. Listen up, assholes! It's time to get the fuck out! Go on, scram! The hyena yells into the mic loud enough that I can still hear her clearly. Not as loud as the roaring criticism coming from the crowd, however. I see a few readying their glasses as if they're about to throw them. This gets Aaron to pull out his own microphone from behind the bar. His expression is stern, ready to scold some miscreants. I suggest that you put everything you bought down at the bar quietly. That is, unless you want to be personally acquainted with the ground. The crowd turns to look at Aaron. Unlike Kareem, there's barely any pushback. One by one, they all start putting their glasses on the bar, neatly. Thank you. He finishes in a gruff tone before turning the mic off. The tiger turns to smile at us. See? That wasn't so bad. She still has a way with words, I see. Glad you still control a crowd at least. Just have to show the people who's the boss every once in a while. Literally. I'll certainly make sure not to get on your bad side. Aw, oh, come on, Cyrus. I hope that didn't scare you too much. Even though his words sound condescending, the look on his face makes me think that he's genuinely worried about spooking me. Of course not. You're still the gentle giant I've known after all. Cyrus. He rubs the back of his head, smiling bashfully. Silver interrupts while wearing his own smile. Ring was right. You both are really corny. Hmm. Like you're one to talk. Thankfully, everyone left without much of a commotion after the announcement. I offered to stay and help clean up, but Aaron told me that the crew could handle it. He reminded me that I need to see Vita later. We're starting my special treatment today. I'll visit you later. I can imagine you'll be a little worn out afterwards. I'll bring dinner. Oh, oh, can I come? The hyena asks with enthusiasm. Corrine, who was a little across the room, somehow could hear us. Sure, anyone who wants to should show up later. Let's say around six in the break room. Woo, free dinner! With that, the hyena scurries back to cleaning up the aftermath of the party. Unlike Kanto, she doesn't seem to mind. Aaron chuckles. That all right with you, Cyrus? Sure, I could use a change of pace with my meals. Not a ton of variety down there. Absolutely not. Ah, oh, damn. It's probably too late to put in a custom order for you. I got some stuff that I want to cook. I'll bring some over to Cyrus throughout the week. Silver pops up behind Aaron, causing the tiger's tail to go stiff. Hey, hey, what did I say about my cat-like reflexes? Yeah, yeah, don't worry, I can handle them. That's not what I meant. Aaron sighs at Silver's antics. If Cyrus wants, I could stay with him for the time being. Both Aaron and I blink. Uh, Cyrus's room isn't that big, you know. Not to mention how sudden this is. I mean, I don't really mind, I'm just kinda curious is all. Well, honestly, I kinda need a new room down there anyway. I guess now's as good a time as any to tell you, Axel. Silver groans a bit and waves his hand. Apparently the boss didn't want my room to sit empty for so long while I was away, not to mention I barely use it when I'm at home. So she had some people pack up my stuff. She paid me extra, of course, but yeah, I kinda need a place to stay. Why not live with me? I have plenty of space. That's alright. Some people were bothering Cyrus when he was alone. I figure he could use someone around. Wait, what? Aaron starts getting concerned, which makes me a little exasperated. Hey, it wasn't that bad. Some people were just curious. I look back to Aaron with a bit of worry. I don't really mind having a roomie, I'm just confused. Well, I guess it's up to Cyrus in the end. Cyrus? I mean... It might be a bit cramped. Are you sure? What about Ring? 
I don't think we're moving in together material yet. And we are? Is that a no? He asks with a coy smile. What the hell? I mean, I, I guess I don't mind, as long as you're sure about it. Perfect, it's settled then. I take it you like your own space usually. Don't worry, I only plan to come back to have a place to sleep. For the most part, that is. Silver pats me on the shoulder. I don't own that many things. I doubt it'll take up that much space. Seriously, it's fine, Talon. I'm just kinda confused. Don't be. I'll make sure you're alright. He pats my shoulder one more time before turning around. After dinner tonight, I'll try to settle in. See you later, Rumi. Uh, sure. See you. And with that, the Arctic Fox struts away, leaving me alone with the tiger. The hell was that about? Aaron has a paw under his chin. I'm not sure. I think I have an idea, but I should keep it to myself. Ooh, thanks. Hey, all I can say is that you don't have anything to worry about. He's probably the most qualified among us that can keep you safe. Better than you? Honestly, yeah, better than me. Psst. Well, let's hope I don't need that much protection. Let's... Aaron laughs nervously. Uh, by the way, Cyrus, I forgot to mention it, but I like your new hair. It suits you. My cheeks feel just a little bit warmer after hearing that. Oh, uh, thanks, Aaron. Of course. Take care on your way back, all right? Will do. I'll see you later tonight, then. It's a date. Is it? I'm not saying no. I'm getting better at navigating my new surroundings. I was able to make it back to the capsule station and find my way to Vita's office without getting lost. Despite being a few minutes early, I knock on the door. Moments later, Vita answers it. Good evening, Cyrus Cantwell. Good morning, Vita. Hope you're well. Can't complain. Want to get things started. By all means. They escort me inside, taking me back to the weird-looking chair I sat in when they operated on me. I can't imagine that this will take more than an hour. If all goes well, we should be able to get along with our Sunday night without incident. Mind if I ask what this is? Vita puts on their surgical mask. I believe I mentioned this during a previous meeting, but we're going to try to jumpstart your natural bodily functions. I see. Have you, like, tested this before? I'm alive and well thanks to this treatment. You're different composition-wise, but I'm sure that you'll be fine. We'll take things slow. If you say so, what should I expect? Nothing too noticeable. You might feel more energetic afterwards and then a crash, similar to caffeine. I've been told that it has an antidepressant effect as well. Can you vouch for that part? I'll get back to you on that. All right, you'll need to take your shirt and jacket off. Without hesitation, I pull them both over my head. I try to fix my hair once they're off. Vita raises their brow at me. Did the hyena do that? Uh-oh. Yeah, she wanted to fix it up. Vita sighs through their nose. Thankfully, it doesn't look like she disturbed the stitches too much. Anyway, are you ready? I believe so. Fire away, Doc. Vita starts to insert the tubes into my back, one by one. The familiar sensation of cool liquid steeping into my spine hits me. Hmm. I'm surprised you liked this, Cyrus Cantwell. I thought it'd make you at least a little uncomfortable. The tanks would get really warm sometimes, especially during the summer. This is all I had to cool me down. That is truly and utterly depressing. I am stunned you still have the will to live. Eh, it wasn't that bad. And other people call me a lunatic. Well, in any case, I'm going to leave the rest to the machine. I'll leave the curtains open and be at my desk. Do you need anything? Hmm, 
Some tea would be lovely if that's alright. I'll brew us a pot then. Hmm. I try to get comfortable against the strange chair. In only a matter of minutes, my muscles completely relax. It's a different sensation than what I'm used to. I can feel just a little bit of tingling throughout my body. Back in current, I felt like my body was being put to sleep. Vita eventually hands me a cup of tea. As usual, it's exceptional. Drinking their tea always leads to a relaxing experience. Instead of passing out, I decide to pass my time surfing the gate on my axiom. I have a lot to catch up on, after all. As convenient as this thing is, it's a bit awkward to use while sitting. Needing to keep my arm up might be a bit of a design flaw. My life must be turning for the better if that's considered a problem. I flip through several pages on the gate. Despite how similar it is to the internet, I find it kinda hard to navigate. It probably doesn't help that I don't actually know any websites, if they're still called that. I found one working news site at least. I don't understand any of the articles. One page has a live feed of a broadcast starring a rather busty fox. She keeps my attention with her charisma, but in the end I don't know what she's reporting on. I try to ask Kai for assistance, but I guess my obsolete terminology makes it difficult for him to find what I'm looking for. He doesn't respond well to vague commands. Kai, are you able to play music? Certainly, Operator. What genre are you looking for? Uh, rock? Kai takes a moment to respond. I wouldn't be surprised if it was looking for literal music made by rocks. Playing Blinded by Fortune, featuring Dahlia Flanders. It isn't someone I've heard of. Looks like the mental link makes it so that I don't need to wear headphones. This will take some getting used to, but it's convenient. The music Kai found is honestly not as strange as I thought it would be. He cycles through various artists over the next hour. I rest against the chair, silently judging each one that plays in my head. Before I know it, Vita nudges my shoulder. They try talking to me, but I can't hear them. Oh, right. I internally ask Kai to shut down, for a time being. The music fades out. Uh, sorry, what was that? I said, you're all done for the day. Was it so relaxing that you fell asleep? Almost. I was actually listening to music through my axiom. Vita raises a brow. I'll never get used to these contraptions. Anyway, if you could lean forward, I'll remove the tubes. I do as I'm told and lean forward. Vita takes them out one by one. Your ports are extremely inefficient. If it's alright with you, I'd like to make some modifications at a later time. So long as you're careful. I'm always careful. I feel my newly shaved head. I'll take your word for it. Is that it then? Yes. We'll do this at least twice a week for the foreseeable future. Once you start showing signs of improvement, we'll leave it up to Titania to decide. Speaking of, am I ever going to meet this Titania? That is up to her to decide, Cyrus Cantwell. Who knows? Maybe. I can't wonder about it for too long because Kai starts beeping. New message from Silver. I take my axiom out and read the message. Sorry to cut this short, but I made a promise to be somewhere for dinner. By all means, go right ahead. Would you like to join us? We'll be in the break room. Vita's eyes go wide for a moment. Hmm. I have some work to do. However, once I finish, I could join you for a little while. Thank you for the invitation. Of course, let me know if you need anything. Indeed. I'll see you soon, Cyrus Cantwell. With a bow, I make my way out of Vita's office. It's quiet in the halls tonight. No one bothers me on my way to the break room. Even though Silver messaged me about dinner, he's not here yet. The place is empty. I guess it's not quite six yet, unless... I start to look around the room. I get the feeling Silver is in here somehow. There must be some kind of trick to him constantly popping in and out of existence. 
To his credit, there aren't a lot of places to hide in here. I try looking under the table, maybe he's under one of the chairs. Did you lose something, Cyrus? Right on cue, the fox successfully spooks me enough that I hit my head on the table when I try to get out. Jeez, seriously, how do you do that? Trade secret. Your head okay? What? Oh, yeah, didn't feel a thing. Hmm. Anyway, Aaron will be here soon. Kanto and Kareen asked me to come along. The more the merrier. I invited Vita too. Hope that's alright. Fine by me. I wanted to ask them how to improve the recipe for tonight anyway. What's on the menu? Secret. You'll see soon enough. Hmm. My pouting is short-lived as Aaron comes to greet us. Evening, fellas. Hope you're doing well. Could be better. Could be eating right about now. Sorry about that. I wanted to change into something a little more comfortable. Work finish up all right? After the party, I stayed for about an hour to make sure everything was good for tomorrow. Shouldn't be anything to worry about. After all the work we did, there better not be. Kanto calls out as he walks in with Kareem. If there wasn't a free meal tonight, I'd be declined to say it wasn't worth it. Kanto comes up behind Silver and hugs him. You're always worth the wait, though. Ha. <laughs> Love you too, babe. They don't waste any time, do they? What are we having? I'm starved! Pace yourself. I don't know what Silver brought, but I tried my hand at making my own carbonara recipe for Cyrus. Score! Carbonara? What's that? Usually pasta with eggs and meat. My mom usually made it with bacon. So like, a breakfast pasta? Huh. I guess so. I never thought about it like that. Sounds yummy! Bring on the carbs! Couldn't say it better myself. What did you bring, Silver? Silver looks a bit stumped. Well... If I knew you were bringing pasta, I would have brought something different. I'm trying a lo mein recipe that Vita told me about. Oh, sorry. Next time we do something like this, we should discuss it beforehand. The way I see it, we got an interesting time on our hands. Now we can see who can make the better pasta. There's no need to make it a competition. I think you're overestimating me, Kanto. All I've had in the past few months were military rations. Were they good? Occasionally. Most just tasted like chocolate sand, though. Blech! Aaron claps his paws together to bring us back on topic. Let's just put a hold on any sort of competition for the night. Let's just enjoy a nice home-cooked meal together as a team. It's been a long time after all. You're telling me. I just hope someone doesn't get all grabby this time around. Huh? Sorry? What was that? I don't speak Pip Squeak. Kanto is momentarily stunned by the loud voice before quickly getting aggressive. You want to say that again, you big bitch? Bring it on, you little bitch! Kareen seems to be enjoying riling people up as usual. This gives Silver a chance to slip away from the two of them. They sure haven't changed, have they? Aaron sighs loudly. You can say that again. Want to get things started in the meantime? Let's do it. Cyrus, do you mind setting the table? You're the only useful person here with free hands at the moment. Sure, I'll get right on it. I start rummaging through some of the nearby shelves. Even the dishes are high quality. There are whole shelves filled with nice porcelain plates free to use. I grab six plates and then start to align them around the table. Kanto doesn't waste a second to make fun of me. Uh, six plates? Did you hit your head again, Cyrus? Actually, yeah, a few minutes ago. Silver pulls on his left ear. Don't be rude, Kanto. We have someone else coming. Ow! Stop! Silver chuckles as he lets go of the half-dragon's ears. Since you asked so nicely, Vita is joining us. I invited them. Uh, why? I call dibs on sitting next to them! Be my guest. Keep the freaks on one end of the table. 
we'll all be stuck on the same side then. Ah, Silver, you're not a freak. Yeah, yeah. You can handle a dinner with them. They're not bad. If you say so. I can hear Aaron chuckling as he's preparing his pasta. I take the opportunity to grab the silverware near him. Lively as ever, huh? Indeed. We used to do dinners like this when we lived here, but we kind of stopped after we moved out. We should do it again. It's nice having everyone together. You know, by their own volition. If you ever do, I'd love to come. This certainly beats sitting and eating by myself, that's for sure. Silver pops up behind me to grab a knife. Don't worry, Cyrus. While you're with us, I doubt you'll have too many dull moments. He begins to chop away at some vegetables. His knife work is quite impressive. He's going really fast. I don't mind things being dull from time to time. I will admit, this underground base is nice and all. However... It's a tad suffocating, right? Something along those lines, yeah. Now that Silver's around, you can go to the surface when you want to, get some fresh air. You gotta find the perfect time though. Too early and it's freezing, and too late makes it sweltering. Do you like to run, Cyrus? I look back at him for a moment. I used to do it all the time, mainly because someone close to me liked having a running partner. It's a lot more enjoyable with someone else, that's for sure. Want to try sometime soon? Sure, that sounds nice. Just know it'll be more of a walk for me. That's fine. It'll be a good exercise for you. I nod quickly. I got so wrapped up in talking I forgot to finish getting the silverware ready. Here, the good knives are in this drawer, although I doubt we'll really need any. We can use them to cut up the pasta. It'll make it easier to eat. Hmm. True. Good call. How about... Silver and I get close together to examine the various knives. Aaron starts to chuckle next to us. Glad to see that you two are getting along so well. Why wouldn't we? Cyrus seems nice. It's not that you wouldn't get along, but rather... How should I put it? Aaron takes a moment to think on it. I guess I'm just happy that you're both already pretty comfortable with each other. You've all been really considerate of me since I got here. Well, mostly. I glance towards Kanto. Although he's not that bad either. The past few days, I've been thinking a lot about how unnatural I really am. But I don't know, being around you all has been very pleasant. Probably helps that we're all misfits too. You can say that again. I don't think I can name a single normal person who works here. Probably for the best. Any normal person would have gone crazy at this point. Glad you're not normal then. You have some real innate tenacity. Yeah, even I'm not sure how I've lasted this long. As long as you stick to your recovery regimen, you'll hopefully live a decent life. That familiar mechanical voice comes from behind us. Hey there, Vita. Long time no see. Same to you. I hope you've been well. I am now that I'm home. Good. Sorry I took so long. I was in the middle of wrapping up the project. Don't worry, we haven't even started. In fact, I think I'm just about done. How about you, Silver? Silver plates the last of the minced vegetables into his low mane. I'd say so. Ready to get things started? Absolutely. Corrine raises her voice across the table. Vita! I saved you a seat! I need you to look at something too. My arm's acting up. Vita pinches her nose. I'm off the clock, Corrine Streiser. They sigh as they make their way over to her. But I guess I can take a quick look. Aww. Come on, Cyrus. Ready to eat? Like you wouldn't believe. I finally get the chance to properly set the table. The rest of the night goes on without incident. It almost reminds me of a Thanksgiving dinner. Just, you know, in an underground covert military base after the apocalypse. Another typical Sunday for the crew here, I bet. I hope it becomes typical for me too.
I know I've already asked this several times, but are you sure you want to move in with me? Silver is in the process of bringing his belongings into my room. The more boxes he brings in, the more wary I become. If you keep asking me that, I'll start to think that you don't want me to. It's not that, it's just... so sudden. Maybe we can try to apply for a bigger room together or something? You can try, but as soon as they see my name on the application, they probably won't allow it. Are you really away that often? Yep. I try to not to stay in one place for very long after all. Silver pushes a big box against the wall before clapping his paws together. That should do it. You weren't kidding about how small your room was, though. I try to tell you. They said it was an old storage room. Silver raises an eyebrow at me. What? Cyrus, how sensitive are you? Genuinely asking. Uh, I don't know. Try me, I guess. Alright then. Why do you think that there's a bathroom here? It's just a storage room, right? Huh. That is strange. I look around my small room again. There's a closet and a full bathroom. I take it this was someone else's room? Silver impatiently gives me a hand motion that I should keep going. Yeah? I guess the fact that Aaron didn't mention that is a clue that I'm supposed to understand. He could have just said it used to belong to an old teammate. Oh. This was Lance's old room? There you go. I knew you could do it. Silver condescendingly claps a few times. And? How does that make you feel? Is it supposed to make me feel something? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You probably think I'm egging you on, but I am curious. Do you care that Aaron lied to you about it? Not at all. I answer so quickly that Silver stumbles. I think he meant to keep going. I don't think lying to someone to protect their feelings is a bad thing. Well, usually. It depends, obviously. Oh, and here I thought I was fast. Sorry, I'm not trying to interrogate you or anything. I just want to know if I should hold my words for your sake. That's nice of you, but I'd rather you not. It would make me feel bad if you felt the need to filter yourself around me. Alright then. Do you want to know the real reason I asked to move in with you? Sure, why not? The boss wanted to put you on a suicide watch. Oh, I mean, I guess that's reasonable. Silver furrows his brows. Doesn't that bother you? After going through all that trouble, I don't think it's weird to add some extra precautions. I'm saying that people you've never met are dictating things about your life, again. That's been my life for the past few centuries, Silver. I'm pretty good at adapting. You're a strange guy, Cyrus. If I had a dollar, or I guess a plum... What? Nothing. So... So what? You're really only here to make sure that I don't do anything reckless? Not exactly. While Titania did give me orders to keep an eye on you, I could have turned it down. She does have reasons to worry. We lost a few people shortly after rescuing them from Resume. Sofer doesn't look me in the eye anymore. I grew up in that shithole, Cyrus. Did you know that? I did not. I know very few things about you. Kanto made talking about you off-limits while you were gone. Hmm. Sounds like him. Silver moves to sit on one of the boxes he brought in. Just know that I intend to keep you safe, even if no one else is around. That's very kind of you, really. But I don't want... I know, I just got done telling you about how other people are calling your shots. But I need you to understand that I'm not asking for your opinion on this matter. All of a sudden, Silver gets that piercing look in his eyes once more. Look, I'm not trying to cause a fuss, but why are you so agitated? Silver stares at me for a moment before realizing how riled up he was getting. He calms himself down soon after. Sorry. You're fine. Do you mind cluing me in as to why you feel this way, though? 
Not a lot scares me, but your demeanor is kind of creeping me out. That is definitely something that I'm known for. When I'm back at the base, I sort of forget how to regulate my emotions. Out on the road, I usually have to suppress them. As an assassin, right? Yes, as an assassin. He says it pretty casually, as if to unnerve me. Instead, I walk up next to him and then sit on the box next to his. So, what's your story then, if you don't mind me asking? Jeez, I just told you I'm an assassin and you walk right up to me. Maybe you are as fearless as they say. Maybe, or maybe I'm just stupid. Don't say that. You didn't last this long by being stupid, Cyrus. Silver starts to relax his posture. I'm trying to think. How long has it been? I mentioned I grew up in Razum. Me and my brother did. Well, that's not entirely accurate. You might find it on some old news clippings or sites, but about 10 years ago, Razum got a lot of good press for taking in orphans. Hell, I think I was interviewed at one point. I was about 11 at the time and Ash was 7. We were desperate. Our folks left us a long time before that. I wanted to make sure Ash could have a decent life, at the very least. I'm sure you're well aware that Resume doesn't present itself to the public in an honest fashion. I nod solemnly, not wanting to interrupt. It wasn't even a week after we moved down there that they started to treat us like fodder. I learned very quickly that the only reason that they were saving so many orphans was because they were cheap and free. Silver interlocks his paws so tightly that they start to shake. As much as I want to forget the things that they did to us down there, I can't. It's my motivation to keep going, to keep fighting. With a deep exhale, Silver eases up before he turns towards me. They forced me to become a child soldier. They trained me to be one, at least. Ash didn't have the knack for it. If you weren't useful to them, you barely got any food. Thankfully, I was able to pull enough weight to keep him fed. It wasn't uncommon for me to steal food, though. I learned a lot just trying to survive. Silver pauses, looking at the wall. They said that we would graduate once we became 18. By that, I mean that we were given the okay to go out in the field and wreak havoc as they saw fit. That is, if you were worth the effort. Silver crosses his arms and thought. If you didn't show any results, they would do awful, awful things to you. I start to think about the ports on my back, and the day that I got them. Still, I don't interrupt. It became routine for me to crawl through the vents in order to make clean getaways. More than once, I saw what they were doing in those so-called research facilities. Pumping people full of strange liquids, liquids that would make even the smallest rat turn into a monster. The only good thing that came out of it was seeing their scientists be ripped to shreds, and even that was hard to watch. Silver shakes his head. I caught wind that they were going to do the same to Ash once he turned 18. I wasn't able to do anything right away. I needed time to get enough supplies for us to live on our own. Did I mention that they didn't pay us? That was sweet of them. Silver laughs at his morbid upbringing. I did their dirty work, making them think I was the perfect model for a child soldier. And on that day Ash turned 17, I made my move and got us as far away from that hellhole as possible. It was a touch and go for a while, I wanted to make sure that he was safe but without any skills that society deemed useful, I just used what they taught me. You became a mercenary? That I did. I 
After a long-winded explanation, Silver gives another long sigh. Sorry, I rambled a bit there. It's okay. I'm just surprised is all. By my situation? More that you told me about it. Wanna know why I told you, Cyrus? Silver leans his arms back to support him comfortably on the box. I want you to know that you're not alone. We all have baggage down here. Are we a little fucked up? Sure. But I want you to know that the reason that I want to keep you safe is so that you never have to experience what Resume did to you ever again. I blink a few times, taken aback by his honesty. I'm not sure how to feel about that right away. Now, if you still want to live by yourself, I don't think Titania would fight it. You really do have a strong constitution. You weren't exactly phased by what I was telling you. Oh, please don't take that as me being uninterested. I'm sorry if I came across that way. Don't worry, you didn't. I can tell you process things internally. Silver stretches his arms out before he gets to his feet. So, what do you think? Do you want to keep living alone? Mm. A part of me wants to say, yeah, I do. But the rest of me thinks that isn't the best idea. Hell, I even forgot to eat my first few days down here because I was so depressed. Let me ask you then. Now that I know why you pushed this on me, and knowing that you don't have to live here, do you want to live with me? Silver cracks a smile. I think it would be nice to have a place to stay, if that helps. A place underground, that is. Vita kind of scares me sometimes, although... Now it's my turn to give Silver a keep-going expression. It would be nice to have a quiet place to come back to. I'd like to stay here, if that's alright. Sure, I don't mind. It'll be nice to have someone around. As much as I like how dark it is down here, it is a bit unnerving staying underground by myself for so long. Hmm, don't worry. If the boogeyman tries to get you, I'll dice him up. I'll be counting on it. How about you? Want to start unpacking? Yeah, I'm glad you're letting me stay. I really didn't want to have to lug all of this to another corner of the base. Don't worry, I have someone on speed dial that could carry it all in one hand. Aaron? Yeah, he probably could. Kanta would be here faster if I called though. Oh yeah? Didn't know this was a competition. Life down here is a competition, Sai. Don't rest on your laurels. If you say so. Let's just get everything unpacked. I'm starting to get tired. Wait, do, do you have a bed? Don't worry, we don't have to share yours. I have an old cot that I got before I started working here. Is it comfortable? No, not really, but I like it well enough. I see. Well, if I'm out and about, feel free to nap on my bed if you ever get tired of it. I might take you up on that, thanks. Don't mention it, that's what roomies are for, yeah? Silver perks his ears up and gives me a much softer smile than I'm used to. Yeah, I guess you're right. Alrighty then, Rumi. Let's get this over with so that you can get to bed. Here, here. We start to open the boxes up. He said that he'll keep some to hold his clothes until he gets proper furniture. Other than that, there's just a lot of miscellaneous stuff, mainly knives and other weapons. Thankfully, it doesn't take more than an hour to neatly put everything away, or at least up against the walls until he can store them. I can't help but yawn loudly. Alrighty, I'm tapped out. I'm exhausted. Silver is already laying down on his cot. He's at the opposite side of the room, near the door. There's enough space for you, Cyrus. I'm sure with the way that you get around, I won't even notice that you're there. That's a perk of being an assassin. I'll try not to wake you if I need to head out by myself. I appreciate it, I'll try to do the same for you. No offense, but it'll be a long time before you'll be able to sneak by me. It might be safer for you to wake me up from over there. He pauses. Seriously, trust me. Got it, got it. I'll try to be careful then. Good. Have a good night, Cyrus. I'll see you tomorrow. I think about getting up to wash my face and brush my teeth, but I decide not to, just this once. 
Instead, I crash into my pillow, feeling just a bit more at ease about my new life. Thanks, Silver. Don't mention it. Go to bed, Cyrus. Hmm. He reaches up to the light switch by the door, making the room completely dark, and I finally drift off into a deep and comfortable sleep. So, that was the end of chapter 11, where we got to s basically get, um, uh, Silver's backstory. And, yeah, it's sad. And I guess a lot more people have a connection to resume, even if it's not direct connections. Like, you, you're not, like, actually from there. But, um, like, Silver and his brother and, um... Cyrus, and now Lance, and then, you know, th there's probably other connect- well, Axel with, um, Xavier, you know. So Resume gets their fingers into a lot of people, apparently. <laughs> but anyways, um, so yeah, there, you guys have it. Ah. <sighs> Look at all the- Good looking new people. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah. So what do you guys think? Actually, let me check how long this is. This is about an hour 24, so it's probably gonna be a little shorter than that when it gets edited. It's probably just gonna be one episode. Um, but yeah. So what did you guys think? Do you guys like Silver? Do you trust Silver? I mean, he, he seems nice, you know. Um, doesn't look like he has any hidden agenda, and that he literally just said what's going on, why he's staying with Cyrus. So, like, literally, there's... he's It's all on the table. He's there to keep an eye on Cyrus, because he just... I, I guess he's kind of feeling that little brotherly... Like... Like, he feels a connection with Cyrus that he also probably feels with Ash, his own brother. Where he's like, I... I, I feel I need to protect this little boy here. <laughs> well, this old man, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah. That's a pretty cool character. I'm looking forward to seeing what's gonna, you know, happen with him. Because at the time of recording this, I think that the Patreon build hasn't been released. So... We'll see, and I still haven't spoken with Orion, so he hasn't hinted anything yet to me. <laughs> he hasn't let slip anything yet. Not that he does. I'm not saying that he does. But yeah. We do talk about, you know, the builds and stuff. Anyways, um, but yeah. So, you know, again, write down in the comments what you think. Uh, it was kind of nice to see them all, you know, eating together, being all basically a team. You know, that, that's nice. Uh, anyways, um, again, comments, write down what you think, and, you know, we'll discuss that later. Should I put this as a premiere? Nah, it's not gonna be a premiere. I kinda want to. <laughs> we'll see. I we'll see if I put it as a premiere. That way we can discuss it within, you know, as it's happening and the thing. I kinda like doing premieres more because it does allow me to at least see how you guys are reacting real time to the videos. Mm, so I might do it. I might do it also with the Heart of Amethyst, which is going to appear before this. This will be out Friday, Heart of Amethyst will be out Wednesday, and Monday is going to be the last episode of the prologue for Neris, so we'll see what happens. Anyways, um, but yeah, comments right down. And thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play Remember the Flowers yourself, you can find a direct link to it from their Twitter page, which I will link down in the description. And if you would like to support the project and get early access to you know, the builds that come after the public builds, like this one, you can subscribe to the Patreon, like me. And, you know, it's just, I think, $7 for, you know, early access, $10 to be put in the credits, and then the $30 to have a, your own little icon that will go down, will go up in, you know, the build that comes up next, and, you know, you get an icon. You know, you, you get to say that I supported the project. Yay! <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, so... I guess I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.